This is Evan Abrams for PremiumBeat.com, and today we are going to be shattering glass in After Effects. We'll be making use of the built-in shatter effect, and you don't even need to use external 3D programs to make it happen. So let's get into After Effects and start breaking things. So the first thing to do in After Effects is create a new composition, and we're going to go with the HDTV 1080-24 preset and a duration of one minute long, background color black, and click OK. The first thing to do is to make the actual thing we're going to shatter. So to do that, we're going to create a new solid, and we're just going to leave that solid as black because we're using a very dark scene, so we're just going to be shattering a black piece of glass. But you can use any piece you'd like. So if you use, say, like a gray, we'll use blackness of 10, and then we'll put some text on top of it. For example, just type in the word glass, scale it up, and put it in the center of the composition there. This will serve as our glass. And if you want to put other things like a texture or any kind of element that you want to shatter, it could be a logo, it could be anything, make sure you put it in this first composition. So select both of those, and then we're going to go Layer, Precompose, and precompose both of those elements, and we'll call this glass to shatter, so we know this is the glass we're going to shatter. Good. Now to this, we're going to apply the shatter effect, and this will determine all of the attributes of the glass that we're shattering. So as you can see by default, it actually shatters a bunch of bricks, which is not exactly what we're after. So go into the shape, change the pattern to be glass instead of bricks, and you can see by default also it has fairly large chunks. We want to simulate the glass shattering in large chunks and then those chunks becoming smaller chunks. So in order to do that, we're going to change the repetitions. So I'm just going to zoom in here on the timeline and we're going to set keyframes for the numbers of repetitions. So call up the keyframes by hitting U. And we're just going to zoom right in here and all the action on these keyframes is going to happen within about the first five frames. So on frame one, we want the repetitions to be 10. On frame 2, we want the repetitions to be 25. Frame 3, we want them to be 35. On uh, frame 4, we want them to be 50. So they're getting quite a bit bigger, quite a bit faster. The extrusion depth we want to take down to 0 0.05 to make them a lot thinner, because we don't want thick glass chunks coming out. We want a thin pane of glass shattering. And this is all a matter of scale, so if you want thicker glass, then of course leave the extrusion depth up. Now the next thing to change is the force, and the force is going to have a depth of 0 0.01 and a strength of 4. It doesn't need to be as strong as the default. And we're going to also keyframe the radius. So click on the stopwatch there, and the radius we want on frame 1 to be 0.11, and then on frame 2 we would like it to be 0 0.12, and then on frame 4, we would like to be 0.17. This is causing the radius to expand into that first line of chunks. And then on the next step, to make sure that those chunks are still consistent with the first keyframe we made. And if you're not scaling the size of the thing coming through the glass here, it's going to become a little bit strange as the size of the glass changes, and it changes where the edge of the break is. So these numbers help keep this within the bounds of what would be an expected shatter pattern. Uh, we leave the gradient and the physics alone. we we'll just come down here to the texture, change the opacity down to 0.75, and in order to observe what we're really doing, change it from wireframe and force to rendered, so we can actually see the work we're doing. Now, the front mode is fine to be the layer, so it will display whatever the layer is. The side mode, however, we want to be color plus opacity. So the sides of the shattered pieces are going to be white and 75% transparent. And the back mode, we're going to have that set just to be color, because we're trying to fake sort of a shine that happens uh, when light reflects off of the pieces. And we can fake this quite simply by just having the back of the pieces be bright, so it seems kind of like they're tumbling in a light. Now speaking of lighting, we have to change some of the lighting settings. And on those settings, we're going to change the light intensity to be at 5, so quite bright, 
and then we are going to move that light to be behind the plane of the shatter, so it's casting light from the back. And then we're going to put the ambient light up to 0.5, and we are going to change the light color to be sort of a light blue. So I'm going to go with something like uh, somewhere in the blues here, not a lot of saturation and uh, brightness all the way up to 100%, so nice and bright light blue light and that should do for the shatter. And the next thing we want to put in is a camera so that we're able to control how we're looking at this. So back in the effect we want to make sure that the camera system it's using is the comp camera so that when we move this camera around in the scene it's going to change the way we're looking at the glass. So as you can see you can move around all parts of this thing with the camera to get a better look at it. In order to control the camera better, we're going to make a new null object and we're going to parent the camera to the null object and then use the null object's rotation and position to move the camera around. So make the null object 3D, pull up its rotation, just use moving the null object around on the screen to change its position around. So we'd like to change its Y rotation a little bit so it's kind of exploding out and maybe set the camera a little bit below it and something like that and now we'll just grab a hold of that z-axis and push ourselves in closer. So now you can see we're nice and close and it explodes right into the camera so that's quite good. Move us back so we can see the full full frame of that break and that should be good. So we have this thing breaking and it creates a hole so that's all good uh, if you'd like to put a background, something in behind here, now is definitely the time to do that. So I'm going to create a new solid, I'm going to make this solid completely black, hit OK, good, and just move it in behind. So it's a light window that breaks and there's nothing but blackness in behind. So take all of these elements and we're going to pre-compose those and we're going to call this glass animation. And now we are going to time remap this to make it more dramatic. So just go layer, time, enable time remapping. And now we want to go from where that first shatter kind of happens. So it's breaking and we want the pieces to be right in our face. So that's a good spot to start. And you can just go ahead about five or so frames, put a keyframe there as well. And now we're going to just go ahead to where all of the pieces have fallen off and away and set a keyframe there. Advance the last keyframe and remove it because really our animation is done after all the pieces are off. What we're going to do is we're just going to grab these last two keyframes here and we're going to move them away from the first two keyframes and After Effects fills in the rest of the information to make this floating glass happen for us. And then we'll just pinch the last two together a little bit so that it's floating and then it speeds away and now take these center two keyframes, so they're the start and end of the slowdown. Hold down Control or Command, click on them, turn them into these nice circles to auto Bezier their, uh, their values. And then you can see that it kind of gradually gets into the slowing and then it comes out of the slowing as well. And the last thing to add to all of this stuff is what's called a force motion blur, which will force these things to be blurry. So it's blurry and then it slows down, so it's like the camera is speeding up to capture these things, but it lets you still have that nice motion blur when it breaks open. So stylistically, we're also gonna to wanna to make a new adjustment layer. And on that adjustment layer, we're going to put a curves I'm going to use this curves just to kind of make things a little bit brighter, a little bit more contrasted. I'm going to go into the red and pull some of the reds out. And we're going to go into the blues and add some blues just to give it a little bit of a blue look because for whatever reason things at nighttime are blue and we associate blue with dark things. Now we're going to create a new solid, make it the comp size, keep it black and put it below everything. And on this layer, we're going to put a ramp and make the start of the ramp to be sort of the lighter color, so maybe a 20%, and the end color make it uh, fully dark, good. Set the start of the ramp to be in the center, set the end of the ramp to be out of frame down in the corner, and then set your glass animation to be on add so that you can see 
we've got this nice gradient just behind coloring everything and maybe change the gradient to a radial gradient and that looks quite nice although the linear gradient you know there's something to be said for that as well so maybe just make this a little bit darker I'm happy with those results so now you have a nice shattering title of whatever you put on that first layer and you can always go back to that layer the glass to shatter layer and then change this so if you don't want it to say glass it could say EC Abrams from premiumbeat.com and then you can have a nice little title here so you might just want to size that up and put that in a better spot but all told that pretty much sums up what we're making the last thing to do is of course export it where you'll just set your work area and render it out so this has been Evan Abrams for premiumbeat.com your source for tips and tricks in After Effects and other applications on our blog. Stop by and learn some stuff. And of course, come to premiumbeat.com for all of your music and sound effects needs. I'm Evan Abrams. Thank you so much for watching. Subscribe to our channels, and I will see you around the internet.